So in this question, we're going to check off the box on an important diagnosis you should be aware of for the USMLE, also cover some important microbiology for you. Now, before we get started, allow me to be an asshole like I usually am and tell you to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Help grow this channel. Share with one of your friends prepping for USMLE. Help bring awareness to this channel. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you want notifications. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. And find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. The links are down below. Now let me start the fucking question where we have a 71-year-old man with a three-week history of a diffuse red rash over most of his body. The palms and soles are spared. This image is showing us a diffuse exfoliative erythroderma. That's how we describe this rash. Let's use big words, okay? Let's use fancy words, but that's what this is describing. Palms and soles are spared. Obviously, that's a long discussion in and of itself. This patient does not fit the demographic for things like secondary syphilis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Kawasaki disease, okay? Hand, foot, mouth disease. It should just be mentioned, okay? You have some many questions. Sometimes we'll write the palms and soles are spared. Peripheral blood smear shows T lymphocytes with cerebriform nuclei, a characteristic finding seen in both mycosis fungoides and caesary syndrome, okay, or caesary syndrome. Now, mycosis fungoides will be a cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, and the cells will have a cerebriform nuclear appearance. And if there is T-cell extension to the blood, oftentimes with this diffuse exfoliative erythroderma, it's a T-cell leukemia, and we now call it caesary syndrome, okay? Now, questions asking about the viral ideology, uh, you need to know that Caesary syndrome slash mycosis fungoides, uh, they can be caused by HTLV1 slash 2, human T lymphocyte lymphotropic virus. Okay. It's a retrovirus similar to HIV. USMLE wants you to know that. Okay. Increased uh, prevalence of mycosis fungoides and Caesary syndrome in IV drug users makes sense. Okay. Similar in structure to HIV. And also increased prevalence in theory in southern Japan and also the Caribbean. Now, if you know the structure of HIV, then and you know HTLV is similar to HIV, they're both retroviridae, it's not a hard question to answer. RNA virus, enveloped, linear genome. Okay? This is an important description for HTLV. RNA enveloped linear. If you were to look up uh, HIV, you actually will not see linear as part of the genome description. Okay, if you go to the Wikipedia article, just as an example, uh, but you will see linear for HTLV. RNA enveloped linear. Now, we could spend 42 minutes going through all of these answer choices and OMG, every little virus that they refer to, but I'm only going to mention a couple high yield ones here you should be aware of. So, DNA enveloped linear versus circular. You need to know the circular one. This is hep B. Linear is herpes viridae. That distinction, very fucking high yield for USMLE. Okay? You'll get a picture of herpes labialis or genital herpes. Easy spot diagnosis. But then the answer is going to be DNA enveloped linear, whereas hepatitis B, DNA enveloped circular. Okay? So look, once again, we can make this an extended clip. You guys don't want a 37 minute clip right now. So the short take home is mycosis fungoides is a cutaneous T cell lymphoma, Caesary syndrome, a T cell leukemia. If we do histology, we will see T lymphocytes that have nuclei with a characteristic cerebriform appearance. Okay, HTLV 1 slash 2, it's a retrovirus similar to HIV. It's RNA, it's enveloped, and it has a linear genome. Okay, you know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.